My Cross and the Cross of Christ by St. Ignatius Briancheninov from his book, The Field, Cultivating Salvation. The Lord said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What does the cross signify? Why is it that his cross, that is a separate one for each person, is also called the cross of Christ? My cross is the sorrows and sufferings of this earthly life, unique for each individual person. My cross is fasting, keeping vigil, and other pious ascetic labors through which the body is humbled and submits to the spirit. These labors must be appropriate to the strength of each individual person, and so each person has his own cross. My cross is my disease of sin, of passions, which already differ in each individual person. Some of them are already present at birth. Others infect us during our earthly life. The cross of Christ is the teaching of Christ. Filled with worry and futility is my cross, no matter how heavy it may be, if it does not become the cross of Christ through our following in his footsteps. My cross becomes the cross of Christ if I am a disciple of Christ, because a disciple of Christ is firmly convinced that Christ watches over him at all times, that Christ allows his sorrows as the inescapable and inevitable condition of Christianity, and that no sorrow would ever approach him if it were not allowed by Christ, and that through sorrows the Christian becomes one with Christ, becomes a partaker of his lot on earth and later in heaven. My cross will become the cross of Christ because a true disciple of Christ considers the fulfillment of Christ's commandments as the only purpose of his life. These all holy commandments become for him a cross on which he constantly crucifies his old man with his passions and lusts. Thus, it is clear that before taking up the cross, one must first deny oneself even unto the mortification of one's own soul. In order to lift the cross to one's shoulder, one must first deny the body its carnal desires and give it only what it needs to survive. One must consider one's own truth to be the worst falsehood before God, one's own reason to be complete madness, and finally, having given oneself over to God, with all the power of faith, dedicate oneself to the constant studying of the Gospels and rejecting one's own will. He who has accomplished such denial of the self is capable to take up his cross. With obedience to God and trust in God's help to make his weakness strong, he looks at all the imminent sorrows and disturbances without fear. Courageously, he prepares to overcome them, hoping that with their help he will become a participant in the sufferings of Christ and that he will attain the mystical confession of Christ not only with his mind and heart, but in actual fact, with his very life. The cross is heavy only as long as it remains my cross. When it becomes the cross of Christ, it suddenly becomes very light. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light, said the Lord. The cross is lifted to the shoulders by the disciple of Christ when he acknowledges himself worthy of the sorrows allowed by God's providence. The disciple of Christ carries his cross correctly when he admits that exactly those sorrows which were sent to him, and not any others, are necessary for his formation in Christ and his salvation. Patient bearing of my cross is true recognition of one's sins. In this knowledge, there is no self-deception. However, he who admits himself to be a sinner but at the same time complains and groans from his cross only proves that he is lying to himself with his superficial admission of sinfulness. Patiently bearing the cross is true repentance. Oh, you who are crucified on the cross, confess to the Lord, who is righteous and just. By your self-accusation justify the judgment of God, and you will receive forgiveness of your sins. You who are crucified on the cross, come to know Christ, and the gates of Eden will be open to you. 
praise God from your cross, cutting off all thoughts of self-pity and murmuring, since they are no less than blasphemy. Thank God for the cross. Thank Him for the priceless treasure of your own cross, for the precious gift to be able to emulate Christ's sufferings. Praise God from your cross, because the cross is the only true instructor, guardian, and throne of theology. Outside the cross, there can be no living knowledge of God. Do not search for Christian perfection in human virtues. There you will not find it, because it is hidden in the cross of Christ. My cross becomes the cross of Christ when I, a disciple of Christ, carry it with an active knowledge of my own sinfulness, admitting I am worthy of death, and when I carry it with gratitude to Christ, with praise for Christ. From praise and thanksgiving, spiritual consolation appears in the sufferer. Praise and thanksgiving become an endless source of unutterable, undying joy that fills the heart, overflows into the soul, and even onto the body itself. The cross of Christ is a cruel sight only to those who see things with the eyes of the body. The disciple and follower of Christ sees it as the source of spiritual joy. So great is this joy that sorrows are completely muted by it, and the follower of Christ feels only joy, even amid the most horrifying pain. The young wife Mavra said the following to her young husband Timothy when he was suffering terrible tortures and invited her to join him in dying for Christ. I am afraid, my brother, that I will not be able to stand firm when I see the horrors of the angered torturer. I will not be able to bear them because of my youth. Her husband answered her, Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and these tortures will feel like healing oil pouring over your body, giving you relief from your diseases. The cross is power and glory of all the saints that ever lived. The cross is a healer of passions, a destroyer of demons. The cross is a death dealer to those who have not transformed their own cross into the cross of Christ, who complain about God's providence from their cross, who blaspheme him, and who give themselves up to hopelessness and despair. Sinners who remain unrepentant and ignorant on their cross will die an eternal death, bereft of the true life in God because of their lack of patience. They come down from their cross only to go down with their souls into the eternal tomb, the prisons of hell. The cross of Christ raises the crucified disciple of Christ from the earth. The disciple of Christ who is crucified on his cross thinks only of the heights. With his mind and heart, he lives only in heaven, already seeing the mysteries of the Spirit in Christ Jesus our Lord. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen.